A ceasefire is currently in place after five days of fighting in the Gaza Strip that killed more than 30 people. An agreement between Israel and the militant group Islamic Jihad to suspend the violence was brokered by Egypt on Saturday. For more on this, CBS News contributor Robert Berger is joining us from Jerusalem to talk about it. Uh, so, Robert, the ceasefire, delicate uh, as it may be, is in place in Gaza right now. Um, how, what role did the Egyptians play in negotiating this? How long is it expected to last? And what sort of concessions, I guess, you know, what were the things that both parties had to agree to? Well, Egypt is the traditional mediator. It shares a border with Israel and with the Gaza Strip, has good relations with both sides. So they basically uh, paid the, played a, a key role in brokering this ceasefire deal. Uh, but it is a very fragile ceasefire. As far as concessions, I mean, both sides basically just agreed um, to stop targeting each other to stop targeting each other's houses. And uh, Israel didn't formally agree to an Islamic Jihad request to stop targeting its uh, leaders. By the way, six top uh, Islamic Jihad commanders were killed in this conflict. So, but right now they're holding fire. And uh, the question is, of course, how long is this going to last? Um, the rounds of violence we're seeing are happening more often now and they're not lasting as long. So the assessment, uh, if, if the past is any yardstick, is that maybe this will last three months up to a year. So just sort of take us back a little. Talk about how this most recent conflict began and, and just what is Islamic Jihad? Well, it began uh, actually a couple of weeks ago when Islamic Jihad started firing rockets at Israel after a Palestinian hunger striker, a member of the group, died after more than a 70-day hunger strike. They fired 100 rockets into Israel, and Israel's response was um, very mild. They, they had a couple of airstrikes, but they, decided, they were actually waiting for a better time. And then last week, in an overnight raid, they took they they killed three Islamic Jihad commanders in separate air raids in Gaza, and then that, that started the whole tit for tat round of violence. More than uh, 1,500 rockets fired at Israel during this period, and Israel carrying out about 300 airstrikes. So today also marks 75 years since the so-called Palestinian Day of Catastrophe. This is. The first year the U.N. is commemorating the day, uh, what's the significance of that? And just remind our viewers what that is. Well, it's called the Nakba, which means the catastrophe of Israel's creation back in 1948. It's observed every May 15th, which was the first day of Israeli independence, and it's marked with demonstrations uh, across uh, the, the Palestinian world, if you will, uh, in, here in Israel, also among Israeli Arabs and Palestinians in the West Bank, refugee camps in Jordan and uh, Syria and Lebanon. And, and the message is uh, 700,000 Palestinians were displaced in 1948. And uh, the, now their descendants total 5 million, and they still harbor a dream to uh, return to their homes in Israel. Now, this is the first time the UN is commemorating it and Israel is furious about it. Uh, the UN ambassador, uh, Israel's UN ambassador, describing it as a distortion of history. And you know, it is kind of ironic uh, that, that the UN actually endorsed the creation of the State of Israel uh, back in 1948 and now is holding observances uh, that basically describe it as a catastrophe. Yeah, it is that it is. I, I'm trying to reconcile yeah. those two notions because you're absolutely right. I mean, uh, all of us know we've all learned the state of Israel was created because uh, in large part of the United States and, and of course, the allies. Um, and so now to have this this day, um, it, 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 it sort of for a lot of people, they may be sort of scratching their heads and wondering, how do you tie those two knots yeah. together? Well, you, basically, Israel regards the UN as, as biased against it, and so it's not. The Israelis aren't really surprised. I mean, if you look at UN resolutions over the years, it's totally disproportionate the, the ones that are um, that are against the state of Israel. So basically, the US, uh, the the Israelis aren't surprised by it. 
but they are outraged. And as for the Palestinians, it gives them uh, an opportunity to air their grievances on the world stage. Mm -hmm. Robert Berger, thank you very much. Thank you.